from tractor driver to having over 80 rentals under his belt in under five years, Alan Folio is doing this job the right way, doing this business the right way, I should say, and he is just going to pour in so much of his knowledge into you. The thing I love about Alan, he just keeps things really super simple. It's not gonna be complicated. It's not gonna be this large, uh, crazy formula. It's just gonna be grind, grit, heart, determination, and a little bit of strategy along with that. So make sure you are taking notes as Alan shares his story, shares his experience. Make sure you are also subscribed to our YouTube and podcast on YouTube. Just a note there, make sure you're hitting that notification bell right next to the subscribe button so that you get informed whenever we are producing content so that you can keep on learning from some of the experts that we've got on. Let's get to this awesome interview with one of my people here in Fresno, Alan Folio. All right, we are really excited today to have Alan Folio here to my left. Alan, uh, you just you make things simple. I think that's why I'm going to enjoy this uh, this conversation because you know how to just hey, it's, it doesn't take a genius to to do things. So uh, before we jump into that, though, we got to start with the Fearless Five, and so I got to always start off with what is your best or weirdest real estate story? Uh, that's a tough one, man. I'd probably say my first rental property that I bought. Uh, we bought it uh, on the market kind of when the market was down and immediately the tenants stopped paying rent and by the time we got the house back we had to evict them. They had basically gutted the whole inside of the house including wiring. Uh, we tried to turn it into insurance. They said, hey, this is a, a civil matter, you know, we need, a, we need a police report. And so we called the police and they wouldn't give us a police report because they said it was a civil, civil matter. We had to take them to small claims court. So we ended up having to eat it. Um, but I think the moral of the story is like that set me up to start doing flips and wholesales and that kind of stuff. So even though it appeared bad on the surface, it turned out to be really good. Okay. Yeah. yeah you just readjusted. That's yep. good. What's your favorite part about real estate investing? Uh, I'd say time freedom, man. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get your rental portfolio set up. That's good. I feel like everyone that I've asked that question to so far has either said freedom or uh, helping other people. So that's that's good to hear. Uh, what's your favorite way to market? I won't say I have a favorite way. I think deals come from, you know, multiple ways. Probably networking, I'd say is probably number one. Okay, cool. And did you go to college? And if so, what did you study? I did not. And that leads us right into your story, which I love because just a little bit ago, you were a tractor driver. I was. So talk to me about what you were doing and how in the world real estate found you. I was uh, working on a farm, driving tractor. I was making a little less than 40000 a year. And one day my wife asked me, are you going to be a tractor driver the rest of your life? I'd never really thought about it before. So I said, well, you know, let me figure out what else I can do. We didn't really have a lot of money. Uh, so the only thing I could come up with was being a realtor. She was a realtor. She was making more money than I was. And so it started my career in real estate. Okay. So you went into real estate because it was comfortable and it, because your wife had pretty much paved that path for you. Is that Correct. right? Correct. And so where did that lead you? you? You jumped in and what kind of success did you see? So I got my real estate license and did pretty good, had uh, quite a few listings my first month. I was doing a lot of door knocking, mostly on notice of defaults uh, and for sale by owners. So uh, did that for maybe close to a year, maybe 10 months, and then figured out that wasn't really where I wanted to be and transitioned into investing and wholesaling. Okay. And... I remember when I first met you, you told me you made a pretty significant amount being an agent, though, your first month, didn't you? I did, yeah. Okay. And did that help you to have some some income to start your investing business, too? It did, yep. So we were just saving all the money we were making and uh, started buying rental properties with the with the capital we were making. Okay. So, so with your background as a tractor driver, what... Did you learn anything in that that has transferred over to, because 
what I know about you is you grind. Like door knocking for a year, a lot of people would have quit probably after just a few weeks, even if it was successful, because that's that's time, that's mm-hmm. effort. And so, was any of that learned from your previous career? Working on a farm is hard work, so I really just took that man and transitioned and put that into into real estate. You know, being a realtor and then transitioning from a realtor to an investor wholesaler and then buying rental properties. So, yeah, I mean, it's just just hard work is at the end of the day. Cool. And you have how many rental properties now today? Uh, we're right around 80. 80. Yeah. And that's in under five years of, of work in this business. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's an amazing transition. I mean, you, you realize that your story is, is pretty um, amazing, right? Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what now is the next steps in your business? What are you working on? We're just uh, staying steady, just doing the, the same thing we've been doing, doing some wholesaling, not really doing uh, too much flipping at the moment. Started lending out private money now, so we're doing that and just continuing to acquire rentals. Okay. And it sounds like from the beginning, you were really set on rentals. What was it about rentals that caught your attention? So after we, after I started making a little bit of money, my wife wanted to go on a vacation. She'd never been on a vacation, wouldn't have any money. So I said, that's fine. Where do you want to go? Well, she wanted to go to the Bahamas. So we went to the Bahamas, and while we were there, we met an old man from Long Beach, California. And he started talking about how he had a lot of rental properties and this and that, and how it allowed him time freedom, which I'd never heard of before. And so to make a long story short, I basically talked him into being my mentor. He didn't have any kids. Mm. And that's kind of what changed my thinking and, and pushed me into the investing side. How much did, a, especially this mentor, play a role in your success today? I mean, he definitely changed my mindset. So I think sir, like getting yourself around different people just gets you thinking differently. Like if I wouldn't have ran into him, I might still be a realtor. Mm. So, what was he? What was it that he said about investing that caught your attention? The time freedom. Yeah. Like he told me, I'm getting paid the same amount of money whether I'm here in the Bahamas with you or I'm back in Long Beach. I'm making the same amount of money. And so when he said that, I'm like, wow, that's you know, because I had to be in California doing the realtor thing at the time to make money. And before that, I had to drive tractor. Like I got paid by the hour. So it was just a, a totally new mindset for me. Uh, technician versus entrepreneur mindset. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So what was talk to me about like your your first few deals here and getting your feet wet in this business. Um, what what things did you learn? What success did you have? Just kind of walk me through a few of those deals if you don't mind. Yeah. So transitioned, uh, got my first rental property like I talked about before, and I was doing a lot of notice of default door knocking. So. I transitioned from like taking that property and listing it as a realtor and taking that property and wholesaling it. So that's where the the transition kind of came in. I started going down to the Radisson downtown. They used to have a lot of foreclosure. I don't know if you remember that. They used to have a lot of foreclosure um, auctions, but there was like hundreds of houses. And so I would go sit down there and try and figure out, I was trying to figure out how do you do all this? And I remember I met a guy one day, and he didn't look like you know a real estate investor or anything, but by the end of the day, he had bought a couple million dollars worth of property. And so I started talking to him, and he started telling me about you know different stuff they were doing and ways they were getting property. And so yeah, I made connections down there, and the properties that I was whole, that I was listing as a realtor, I just transitioned and started wholesaling to those guys. Okay, so. Let's just assume right now we've got some people who are out there that are either thinking about becoming a real estate agent or they are a real estate agent. What were the benefits that you saw of wholesaling your deals rather than putting them on the MLS? For me, it was really, I didn't have like a, a, a big motivation. I was just money motivated, to be honest with you. And I didn't really, I wasn't really motivated to like list people's houses. It just, I just wasn't a good fit for me. All the paperwork and all the documentation and stuff. I mean, I had just got off a tractor. I had never like even done paperwork. So I think it was probably too big of a switch for me. And so then I kind of reverted back to what was more comfortable, 
not as much paperwork, you know, one or two documents to get the house under contract instead of, you know, 50 with the listing agreement. Did so, you find yourself making more money wholesaling it? I did. Yeah. yeah. So more money, less paperwork. Yeah. Kind of sounds like a win-win all the yeah, way Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Once I figured out the switch, it was good. Yeah. Okay. And so you've done a lot of different types of real estate with wholesale to flips to uh, Burr method and, you know, of course, holding on to rentals. When a deal comes across your desk, how do you decide what you're going to do with it? I think it all depends where I'm at in life. I don't know if it's like that for everybody, but for me, it's, okay, what do I have going on? How many rehabs do we have going? How much do I have on my plate? What's going on with my family? So how much money do I have in the bank account? So that's kind of the way I look at things. And like keeping it for a rental, I look at cash flow, number one. And is it in close proximity to other stuff I own? So if it is, normally it'll go into the, to the rental portfolio. Number two would be how much can I make on a flip, right? If there's X amount on a fit, flip, 30, 40 grand, I'll flip it. If it's too skinny, then I'll wholesale it. So that's kind of how, kind of how I do it. Okay, cool. So I think the big thing to take away there is after evaluation, or even maybe before evaluation, where's your goals at? You got you got to know where your goals are at if you're going to decide what you're going to do with this property. Correct. So, I would say if you get a good deal though, you can figure that out. Okay. Like, I think that's the most important part of any of this. Making sure the numbers pencil and making sure it's a good deal. If you got a good deal, you'll be able to do something with it. Guaranteed. There you go. Okay. So going back to your story a little bit, you know, you're getting some success with this business. You had uh, a couple of years ago some employees and starting to build this big business. And, and then what happened? Uh, I had a heart attack. So it was actually about a year ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I had a heart attack and had to have um, four stents put in. And yeah, just kind of made a little bit of a transition. Thankfully, I had the uh, money coming in from the rentals and the notes that we have. And so just downsized the office, and I bought a motorhome after I felt better and took off for a while. So, uh, that, That's a good exit strategy for sure. Yep. <laughs> um, so uh, rumor has it that the day that you had a heart attack, you still went and closed the deal. Yeah, because I didn't know I had a heart attack. Okay. I mean, I knew I, I felt terrible, and I couldn't really move this arm. But I worked out early in the morning, and then I went to a, to a property to – throw some stuff in the back of my pickup. And when I did, I had like a severe pain in my chest and I couldn't really breathe. So I sat down for about 20 minutes and um, caught my breath. And I didn't know what was going on in my arm. I really couldn't move my arm. So then I drove home. I get home, my wife says, you look like you need to lay down. Okay, so I, I said, yeah, I don't really feel too good. I was, she said I was white. So I laid down for, I don't know, maybe about 45 minutes, but I had an appointment at a property. So I said, hey, I got to go to this appointment. And she didn't want to let me go, but I went anyway. I uh, went and locked the property up, put it under contract, and um, came back home. I was still feeling terrible, so she made me go to the emergency room. Went to the emergency room, and they said, you've had a heart attack. They did some more tests and found my arteries were all clogged. So, wow. Yep. Holy cow. And uh, any history of that in your family? Uh, not that I know of, man. My, I remember my mom having um, heart attacks. But she was a drug addict, so I figured it's probably just because she's a drug addict, she's freaking having heart attacks. Yeah. So who knows? But they said um, my arteries may have been too small. So I don't know if that had something to do with uh, when she was pregnant or, or what the deal was. Yeah. Well, so. I, I just have to point this out. And I know you're a humble guy, so you're, you're probably not even wanting this attention. But I mean, now that you mentioned that with, you know, growing up with, a mom who's uh, addicted to drugs, plus you're, you, you were a tractor driver, and then having the, these health issues. I mean, if to me, I look at your story, and I say, if you can do it, I mean, anyone can do this. And, and that's, that's a, a testament to you, that it just takes hard work. I mean, it just takes that grit. And do you, do you find that that is true about this industry? I mean, that's probably the biggest thing. I didn't even graduate high school. I only went to the 11th grade. So I'm not a smart guy, but you know, I know how to run basic math. Like 
basically all you need to do know is, is know how to run some numbers, man, and just hustle. And I think if you can do that, then the sky's the limit. That's awesome. So with, with this health issue that you had with the heart attack, how did that affect your business? How did you bounce back? Uh, I just downsized, man. Just kind of let everybody go at the office, and um, I closed up shop and took off. My wife and I traveled around the country, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I just got back from a, a month being gone, and I'm getting ready to leave again on Saturday. So, but I've got a couple people back in the office now, and we're just doing our thing. So it's good. It's like, great. yeah. So real estate with all of these rentals has been the reason that you're able to have that freedom. Correct. That's yeah. Awesome. That's yeah. So cool. Yeah, and we, you know, we've still got income coming in from the uh, from the wholesales and stuff too, but primarily it's the rental properties. Yeah. So. Can you talk about, you mentioned networking being your favorite source of, of marketing. Can you talk about how that plays a role in your day-to-day? -day? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different marketing, you know, but I think everybody does kind of a combination. I think if you build good relationships and do what you say you're going to do, like, it'll go far. Like, people know, like, if I tell them something, it's going to get done, right? So I think just doing what you say is like a big thing. And building relationships with people is, you know, it's big, man. So there, there's guys that I know the same way. If they tell me, hey, Alan, it's, it's good, I'll take it. I don't even have to think twice. And so for me, if I'm in a wholesale deal, that's worth like more to me than, you know, I may take five or $10,000 less just because I know he's going to get it done. So nice. for me, that's, that's just my model. Follow through, doing what you say, building relationships. Yep. I love it. Absolutely. Uh, you, with all the rentals that you have, you've also been uh, vocal about how the fact that a lot of them you've done through the Burr method. Can you talk about that a little bit, what that, why you like the Burr method? And um, honestly, how many of those rentals do you think have been acquired through the Burr method? Uh, quite a few, man. I mean... I don't think I've ever bought anything nice just because <laughs> it doesn't really, you know, there's no value add. So we're always looking for some type of, of deferred maintenance or, or whatever, an issue basically, where we can come in and add value. So like on the one to four units, it works really good. And then we transitioned into like five plus basically doing the same thing. So yeah, it's, it's, it's I, in my opinion, it's a good model. Because you're 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 buying something that's undervalued, either due to the condition of the property or based on the rents, right? And you're you're going in and, and renovating, getting a better quality of tenant, and with that increasing the rents and recruit and increasing the uh, NOI. And so. that'll be something that we really dive in deep for the next episode, the Burr method, and you know, of course, uh, that's been a public thing that I've heard about even before you ever brought it up when we first met, but. I don't know. There's something about the way that you talked about it that it was like a light bulb moment. And so I feel like that needs to be something that our audience hears. So in the next episode, we'll definitely talk about that a little bit more. What I want to wrap up with is uh, really just a couple questions. So let, let's start with this. What is the one thing right now um, that's driving you, especially knowing that you, know, you love getting away and you love being able to have that time freedom? What, what, is there something that drives you to keep on when you are here in town, you know, working those longer days? I have a new baby, so I'm doing it for her now. Just, yeah, just so she'll have it easier than, you know, probably you and I have had it coming up. That's so awesome. it's probably the number one reason. Good. That's awesome. Um, someone brand new about to start this business, or maybe they're like me. They've been in for five or six months. What's the number one piece of advice that you would give? A lot of activity, man. Yep. Just, I mean, even if you don't know what you're doing, like my grandpa used to say, I don't give a shit what you do, just do something. So I would say just even if you don't know what you're doing, just get out there and get after it. Okay. Yep. You heard it. Get after it. And that's what fearless flipping is all about. So you just got to get out there. No matter where that fear is at, no matter what that comfort level is at, you got to get out there and get started. Absolutely. Cool. So if people would like to get started but have some questions still, uh, would you be open to them contacting Yeah, you? that's fine. Shoot me an email. I think you have my contact info. Yep, absolutely. We got alan at foliogroup.com. That's A-L-L-A-N 
at F-O-G-L-I-O group.com. Any last words? I think we're good, buddy. Okay. Thanks so much, Alan. I appreciate yep, your appreciate time. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. It's your time to go out and conquer real estate investing. We'll see you next time. As you heard in the next episode, we're going to talk about Alan's Burr method. And, you know, the Burr method's been around for a while, but it's something that Alan just really makes simple, I'm telling you simplicity. That's the name of the game here. So make sure you tune into that. On this episode, make sure you go back to the show notes, fearlessflipping.com forward slash Alan, A L L A N, and you can get all of the details from what you just learned here today. Make sure that you do that. Make sure you've taken some notes and make sure you tune into the next episode as well. You've been checking out Fearless Flipping. It's your time to conquer real estate investing.